So just a short introduction, uh, my name is Ibrahim. So I've been working at Orista for quite some time in university. And if you want to uh, see my, my profile, you can go on LinkedIn and uh, I'm yeah, mostly active on Twitter and Instagram and I'm yeah, French. Okay, so to put things in, uh, in context, um, I'd like to, to look or to refresh your mind. Uh, you remember we started for uh, dealing with the FPGA development cycle. So I came across this paper uh, from which I extracted this figure uh, on the right. So uh, a typical uh, FPGA development uh, consists of the software aspect and then the hardware aspect. We are dealing with really component, uh, electronic components. Uh, from the software aspect, we have this uh, requirement specification. Always, everywhere that we do, we have always, always verification and checking if uh, things are designed the way we want. Then you have the design, implementation, and integration validation. And then really, when we look at the software aspect of the tools, uh, we uh, look into the design specification. RTL is this uh, registered transfer level, which is basically uh, designing uh, circuit logic, uh, digital circuit logic, uh, using the hardware description. I think uh, Joyce mentioned this earlier, using languages like uh, very large or VSVL. Then we move into uh, a transmission to the label design. This is the synthesis part. Um, before that, we can always uh, look at the behavior simulation. We want to assess that all the timings of our clocks and all signals are, are, are OK. Uh, and then once we pass the uh, get label design, uh, we, look into the, uh, we go into the, the layout, which is this uh, place and um, aspects. And this is really uh, choosing which FPGA we want to uh, implement the, the, the thing into. And then afterwards, uh, we have uh, an FPGA bitstream, which is the file that is to, uh, sent to the FPGA to program uh, the component. So I think, just not to repeat too much, but the FPGA is, is shown on the left. So we have really uh, a field programmable get array. So we have an array of uh, supposedly gates. And within, we have those uh, uh, logic blocks, a lot of logic that you can use, uh, registers, etc. And uh, the probability of, of FPGA is really that you have all these buses uh, that interconnect that allow you to uh, customize really the functionality within the FPGA. Um, <clears throat> and then outside, you have these uh, IO boot blocks. So some low end FPGA have like really IO no input output signals. But the IAM can have uh, transceivers, like more advanced uh, blocks from which you can uh, do some uh, uh, USB informatics uh, communication, high speed uh, blocks. And then the, uh, the more uh, the FPGA uh, evolved uh, over time, they added more uh, block RAM, DSP slides, etc. So processing uh, uh, blocks uh, from which you can uh, exploit uh, uh, and basically. Uh, increase your, the complexity of your design. So today, we are really, really interested in the synthesis and the place and route uh, from the uh, 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 development software uh, aspect. But you have to remember always that this is an electric component that you program later. Um, and it's, it's really a, a kind of a, a liaison between the hardware and software uh, to get it. So I put the, the paper here. Uh, for you. Uh, this paper actually refers to some uh, IEC uh, standard, uh, so it's always uh, interesting to see that uh, for some um, aspects. You also have those specifications. So, um, not open source, but commercial tools uh, for uh, FPGA development uh, are mo mostly free now, uh, at least for uh, Xilinx, uh, which is now over by AMD. The tool is this one for Vivado. Uh, for Altera, which has been bought by Intel, uh, the tool is called Optus. And afterwards, Lattice has a tool called Lumen. And then Lumen is the new, quite recent FPGA from China, quite small model. Uh, I've discovered this. I'm, uh, I mean, oh, 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 I'm really a science guy, so actually, uh, I, I really, really use a lot of the. Of the FPGAs, but there's a lot of uh, choice for us to, to choose to, to use one. And then on the left, you can see the uh, simulation, uh, RTL analysis, and then this uh, synthesis 
uh, implementation and then bit stream uh, generation. So these are the standard tasks that uh, those tools will, uh, will do for you. And then in the middle, we'll have a VHDL uh, code example. So FPGA programming is quite niche. <coughs> it's not something that, that is really uh, as popular as C++ and software engineer. It's more electronic people moving into the programmable aspects, and then we have FPGA. FPGA is usually the, the transition between um, some accelerator that you want to make an ASIC, uh, an ASIC chip, and then you actually exploit the FPGA aspects uh, to, to do some testing. So the focus of this paper, of this uh, talk, is really uh, Yosis and next uh, PNR. They took a few uh, part of it earlier. So uh, for me, as a scientist, uh, it really come up from from that uh, early paper, uh, 2018, 2019 where they introduced this uh, free and open uh, software architecture. Uh, really architecture neutral because they want to, to really be uh, as generic as possible. Um, and then they want to have this uh, framework to have a flow uh, for the placement, routine, bit stream generation, etc. And the early stage uh, was really uh, from that paper using lattice and uh, small size FPGAs in the ICE 40 and the lattice TCP5. Uh, these are really the low end, I would call it low end, not as low quality, but really small resources uh, and really hobby kind of price uh, FPGAs. Um, and really, this, uh, this paper, I, I think, uh, really did a lot of hype and, and really uh, started uh, really the, the, the open source framework for, for FPGA development. So you can, uh, yeah, I, I'll actually make available the, the PDF. Uh, it's on my GitHub somewhere, uh, so you can click and, and go to all these links. Um, simply, uh, your sys can really be uh, compiled from source, uh, built from source. So instead of having a tool that you download from uh, Dialings, let's say, a 50 gig massive files uh, that you install and half of the half of the uh, the, the thing installed is sometimes not used because you know, they make you download like some uh, intra-scale or whatever driver or you never use. Uh, Yosis and, and, and uh, uh, the PNR part is really uh, smaller and you really, uh, from the philosophy of open source, have access to everything and see what they are doing, contribute, um, etc. Uh, and then it supports uh, mainly very log uh, and system build log, but there is some uh, Initial attempt to do VHDL, um, and additionally to this um, uh, YOSIS, uh, they have all sorts of uh, little project, additional project that kind of specialize. So for example, the famous one is Trellis, which is used for the lattice TCP5 uh, FPGAs, uh, and then maybe also you talk later on uh, dealing with the RIS5. So you also have a, a Pico uh, RV32 uh, RISC. Uh, Processor, so everybody kind of heard about RISC five, the instruction set. Uh, thirty-two is for the thirty-two bit, and uh, the N is uh, for the multiplication division, and the C is the compressed instruction. So the RV thirty-two, imagine the of a processor that you basically uh, know and can change, remove or add the specific instructions by yourself, and uh, not like the Pentium four or whatever. You really have access to all the source to build, modify, and maybe let to look at uh, aspects of security if you, if you are really looking at this. Uh, so this is really, uh, really uh, used for a lot of the, the RISC-5 uh, development. So one of the additional projects um, that uh, is from this uh, F4 PGA is this project X-Ray. So uh, for myself, dealing with mainly designings for uh, FPGAs, uh, this is uh, a project that tried to document the the bit stream um, of of the of those uh, FPGAs. So if you use Yado and you have a certain design, you create this bit stream. That bit stream is really um, the kind of actuator property of of, of uh, Xilinx. Um, and first, you sort of try to reverse engineer that bit stream to identify what you've modified in the code in the in the design. Um, so for this, you, you, you can actually uh, help 
to, to contribute. If you have a, a specific FPGA that they don't have in the catalog at the moment, you can basically use those uh, mini test uh, experiment and uh, fuzzers, uh, which basically help to uh, generate small designs and have them to study the, the bitstream. And ultimately, this basically continue to this project to generate uh, properly the bitstream. So at the beginning, you have this aspects of you are reversing, reverse engineering the bit speed. Um, personally, uh, I still use Ibago as a tool, but uh, ultimately maybe some of these big companies um, will be doing more and more open source, um, and they will see the, the, the appeal of, of having a community. Of course, uh, for Zanin, they have uh, such a, uh, a large variety of FPGAs that you have to focus on specific ones, so the most, uh, the most uh, popular FPGAs are the ones uh, are the So the next tool um, is uh, uh, next PNR. So PNR is uh, the place and route tool. So you have the same, you compile from source the, the whole uh, PNR, and then you have uh, different projects, uh, iStore, Trellis, Outside, uh, Apic Lab, and then for the Intel Cyclone 5, uh, some experimental for Mistral. Uh, so you have a part of, of, uh, of groups or people who are specifically focused on, on, on those uh, activities. So you can go to Savannah. I think for the like, technical presentation, there's no point uh, going into, into, uh, into too much, uh, like, like even demoing because it's, it's too short. But uh, later on, you, you can basically try to, to look into, into those FPGS. The, the Godwin and Lattice, they are quite small FPGAs where the uh, Xilinx and, and maybe uh, Intel, IMD and Intel now, they, they can be some quite a beefy FPGAs. So to introduce uh, quickly, also we have an FPGA uh, community in Singapore, so we have a Facebook group, and uh, recently we've had the HackerWare X FPGA Day, so everybody is welcome to join those uh, those um, uh, days where we introduce FPGA, how it works. If you're an experienced person, you can come and demo uh, talk about applications. And uh, over the summer, uh, this summer, we can try to have a session specifically on those uh, uh, uses to try to have really uh, a proper uh, tutorials. Additionally, just to finish, uh, we also have a session called uh, Paper We Love. I think with Team May at the back and organizing this. In the past, so for the FPGA aspects, uh, we have those two papers, um, a complete uh, open source design flow for Goodwin. Uh, I don't have this FPGA, but we can still uh, buy one from AliExpress or whatever source that, uh, that has this. And then we can you know, go through the, the, the kind of steps. Uh, when you read the paper, they explain what we expect to do some, some testing. So this, this uh, session is not to go too deep, but it's really to introduce this new movement, uh, quite driven by the risk five actually, uh, in, for, from my point of view, uh, of tools that will be open source, from which you can learn, and from which you can also develop um, specific aspects to optimize, to, to improve uh, aspects in terms of security, in terms of, of, uh, of other uh, things. Uh, so yeah, I think N was presented to me earlier. So if you have any question, I'll be available. I don't want to, to uh, you know, Spend too much time because uh, I've already used one of the things. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And our questions? We have one minute left. Anybody? All right, no questions. Oh, one question. There we go. If someone wants to get started with this tool, uh, what's the best way to get started? So, so they, they, there's a unique. Uh, you, uh, do they, do they have to compile them from source or how does it work? Yeah, usually you, you get up and you make uh, that you, you clone, you clean go, you get clone the archive, and then there's a whole uh, sequence of make, etc. And then afterwards, when you have those tools, they go through some very basic examples. Uh, and that's why I had, uh, there's a couple of videos on YouTube that I've now discovered, and actually they go through some examples. So I will add this at another slide. Uh, to be honest, compared to the normal Vivado, if you're used to those that flow, you know, programming, this one is more of a Linux part when you, you, you script a lot, but you can automate a lot of things and that's the, the, the Thank you. Okay.